Good day beautiful people. Welcome back to our crafting, the channel where we learn, grow and craft together. Today we're going to look at ATC coins. Now what are ATC coins? No, it's not cryptocurrency. ATC coins is the circular version of an ATC card that is 2.5 by 3.5 inches. The circular tag or the ATC coin is a 2.5 diameter, 2.5 inch diameter. Now that's just the international standard. If you want to go into swapping ATC cards or coins, it needs to be a certain diameter or certain size. And those are the specifications. We're going to have a spin on the ATC coins and we're going to make some circular tags and pockets today as well. You can use whatever sizes you have, whatever paper you want. It's yours. So circles. I normally cut some circles from some scrap or remnant cardstock. Whatever is left, different things. Butter, there's that butter color, the butter color cardstock, 180 gram or a little bit more heavier cardstock. That is two inches, so that's a little bit too small. We need to get the bigger one, which is two and a half, which is that one. So we're going to use a few of those. We will probably have time to do the bigger one with a pocket and show you how to make the ATC coins. That's a very nice size, but it can be very limiting in the size. As you cannot add too much there, there should be space for a focal point, and maybe some background imagery or stamping, stenciling, labels, whatever you decide to add. If you don't have circle punches, you can use a little jar, a glass, a cup. You can use your brother's can and cut or a cracker or a cricket or a um, silo head. You can use any one of those fancy machines. If you don't have the punches or those machines, then you can do it manually by tracing the circle and then just cutting it out. So we're going to look at making a pocket with a circular tag today. So if you want to make the pocket, I trace the CD there and half a CD, which actually half a CD, listen to me, half a circle there from the CD that fit in that piece of cardstock that I had available. Then I use the CD and I traced it again and manually just resized it a little bit smaller than the actual CD size. You can use a ruler and a pencil to do that properly. Here I made a loaded pocket, which is the same circular pocket with um, some regular tags in it. I haven't even backed those tags yet on cardstock. It's just paper, so really flimsy. However, it gives you some space to do journaling on the back and if you put various sizes of tags in it, then you have a loaded pocket. Another one of my favorites is vintage shabby chic. Some tiny coins where I have already have some background stamping on whenever I'm doing stamping and I have to catch some ink I will just catch it with those little coins. Easy over time you build up a background that is easily then transformed into a little tag. And that's how you build your, your stash and little bits and bobs that you can add to your journal without extra added effort or time consuming only thing is to remember you have those little things and that you can use it for instance if you've got second generation stamping that you can do on there 
you don't want a crisp image as it's not the focal image, you can have that in the background and utilize it later to make a beautiful tag for your journal. So let's get started. I made us already an example so that we can look at that. There are little bits that are already stamped showing you inking the edges with no extra effort. We have those two little coins ready done and could be used anywhere in your project. Even when you're making a loaded pocket, you can add that even if you have a stacked tag, you can use or include those. For the bigger one, I have stamped on the edge. You can see there, that's how it fitted together. And with one stamped image, I've got two products that are almost ready to work. So just ink the edges, did a bit of other stamping on top and Bob's my uncle, that was done. Very, very easy and quite simple and not taking a lot of time to get that done and sorted. The feel of those little ones, just amazing with the colors. You can add a little label if you want to, if you've got a tiny little label little numbers, clear stamped images, like numbers in a different color, you can add that so much. The craft paper, very flimsy, stamped on it and the ink seed through to the back. So I will use that to glue down directly on a page or on a coin. If you take a bigger punched circle, you can ink on it. You can paint, you can stencil, you can stamp on the background, use scrapbook paper. Again, the options are endless. I inked around all those. You can glue it down directly or you can stamp directly onto your coin. At the back, you can see there's some ink coming through shining through, it's not bothering anybody. If you glue that in a corner of a page, you can add a little tag to the bottom, I mean to the, to the back of that, if it's then like a little tuck spot. That is just that buttercolor cardstock, 180 grams, added some book pages there, stamped on it, stamped on the book page in the background, added that to the, the tag pocket, inked a little bit here and there, went ahead to decorate that little pocket part and there we have that circular tag and pocket ready. I normally start with the tag and then pull the decorating into the pocket. Now you don't have to make the pocket, you can just do the circular tags without the pocket. But having the pocket and the tag really looks so cute. Quite impressive in your junk journal. Now for those of you that might be card makers, you can easily use this and have it as a card topper for your cards. What paper can you use? Scrabble paper, DigiKids, all kinds. I'm showing you a set that I've designed myself. No, it's not available in an Etsy shop. I don't have an Etsy shop. I just normally create paper for my own usage. These are just printed one-sided, it's supposed to be double-sided. I, however, went ahead and just printed one set on the one side. You can ink the background stencil. If you print on the other side, it will then be double-sided paper. That intention was to fold it in half if printed both sides. 
that you can include that in your junk journal, which is when we get to the signatures, that's exactly what I will include and I will have the pages there. You can easily print this on cardstock, on vellum if your printer can manage that. Or another option for you is to go to a printing station nearby and they normally have the ability to print for you at these printing facilities. Different types of background paper with mushrooms. Just remember we work on a mushroom theme album. Or journal. You can add photos to it. You can only add photos, then it's definitely an album, journal. At this stage, you can use it for anything, any purpose. Just getting the sizes there, as I love using circles and I normally have a variety of sizes. So seeing that I want to show you the 80 coin, which is 2.5 in diameter, I need to just get the measurements right. So I'm putting the others to one side before I get confused again. And a few tiny ones that I will, if we have time, show you how to do that. Just choosing a background paper, deciding on that. Then decided, okay, I'll take the easy way out and punch it instead of gluing it down and cut it out folding that paper over so that it's one a little bit more thicker and two two flies with one shot however my punch didn't want to play along and it only punched about half of that circle all's well that ends well get our scissors out and let's just cut it out on that impression that it made there might be a little bit bigger than what we need but at least we can still fix it like i said earlier there are no mistakes in journaling sadly the punch didn't work so just trimming those ends a little bit more you can use aluminium foil keep on punching apparently the heavy duty one to sharpen your punches i will have to try that out and see if I can get this punch to work again, uh, work properly again, that is, um, for the Americans here that might join, aluminum foil. Gluing that down, put in glue on the little coin so that I can glue the background paper on there. Using that, lining it up, and pressing it down just so that it sticks properly. And going to do the same with the other one, putting glue on the cardstock. Sorry, you just see my fingertips there. And in the frame, there we go. Making sure that you put your glue properly on so that it sticks well. Quite frustrating when you want to work on it and you realize, oops, I did not put enough glue and it did not glue down properly. Just trimming the bits that's hanging over the ends there. You could use an emery board and just file it down as well. But for that, I will suggest the glue needs to be dry already before you file down. It might just tear the paper. Trimming that little bit, making sure that it's neat and tidy. The two are the same and that's not a worry. You can decorate the front however you wish to make them look unique 
or you can go ahead and decorate the two more or less the same. I cut a bit of that border out, checking which part I want to use and then trimming that off so that I can fuzzy cut the part that I want to use. Fuzzy cutting the little background off so that we're just left with the mushroom image. Just checking the size of the coin, if it fits now. Getting walnut stain, which is the darker one of the three that I have on my desk. And inking the edges. Because it's very light and the background is also quite light, it helps to get our image stand out a little bit more, defining that as the focal point. Inking all the nooks and crannies, of which there are quite a few there. There we go, we can see it on there. It will hang in the air. So taking a scrap piece of paper, tearing the end because I don't want to cut it straight with scissors or tearing it with a ruler. Just tearing off the air so that it is not straight. Why do I do that? So that we can ground those mushrooms. Otherwise they hang in the air like washing on a line which is not going to be visually pleasing. It's not going to make sense. Trimming off the end there, that's hanging over. Putting glue on our mushroom. Making sure I do not tear that very flimsy parts as it will show up if it's torn and you have to glue it on the coin. There we go. Positioning it nicely on that little coin. And of course, inking the edges, which is helping to show if there's any shark's tooth there, which I found one trimming that quickly and continue with inking. The inking just finishes off the little coin very nicely as well as hiding all those tiny little bits of white but the biggest positive on that is that it draws the eye to the focal image and that is what we want little bits of stamping that tiny mighty little stamp of figures one, two, three, and four. Just such a nice addition. Yes, it's easier to stamp with the stamp block. However, I'm too lazy to grab one now. Going to use that there because I want to ink on the one side using that circular stamp and just add a part of that and catching the extra, which is like a mask, making sure the impression is there. Yes, it's always risky stamping on your background papers. If you don't worry about that, it's okay. But you can drop an ink pad or the little stamp when the ink is wet and you can have your, your paper then smudged. 
adding that little text stamp from the set tiny toadstools to the top and at the very bottom as well just filling in those ends giving more interest and making the whole thing more complete and cohesive looking closing the ink pad there So we've got one coin done. Now to start with that bigger, bigger circle tag and pocket. Choosing the paper, that's the other coin that I put to the one side. We'll decorate that at some stage. Choosing the background paper. This time I'm putting the glue stick to the end, just cleaning the edges a little bit of that glue stick, making sure that there's glue all over that circular tag so that the background paper will glue down properly. Putting a little bit more, making sure it's glued well. Seeing where it will fit, turning it over so that I glue down and making sure that the background paper is then going to show to the top. I'm not gluing it face down. Then the semicircle, I decided to do that in the same paper. This time I'm putting the glue to the, to the semicircle while pushing it against my fingers. A little bit more time consuming but that way I can see in the light where there are still areas that need glue. You see, I'll save that strip on top, which we can maybe use in a later project, either stamping down as a label or as part of a collage, cutting out that circle turning the paper again if you cut into the cardstock it will be a little bit harder to cut if you cut easily it means you're only cutting the paper try to keep as close as possible to the edge without cutting your actual pocket just trimming a little bit there while cutting out. Just feeling there with my fingers. Going ahead to cut out that semi semicircle, sorry. Semicircle, semicircle. Which will then make our pocket. trimming the ends where there's a little bit of an overhang there. Fits nicely. Just seeing a little bit of an overhang there and neatening that up a bit. I beg your pardon. <coughs> Going to ink that edge quickly. Before we glue it down. Because if you glue it down first, you will not be able to ink that. Got a bit of ink on my fingers. Just checking if I'm going to put ink over my project.
taking some collage, distress collage medium and use that as glue. So I'm just putting some of that right on the curved edge of that semicircle. And we're going to glue that down to form our pocket. Making sure to get enough glue there, but not too much that it seeps through. Collage medium is an excellent glue. Just make sure where you want it because it sticks down almost immediately. Just making sure those ends don't stick out too far. And yes, we will still ink the edges at a later stage once it's decorated. Now I'm going to put that to one side so that it can dry and work on the tag now. Now the tag was the same size. I had manually cut it down. If I was thinking a little bit, and you will see now that I am erasing the pencil lines, I could have just glued it down facing down that way but I didn't think of it at the time. Choosing my paper, what I'm going to use, deciding which part I want to use there, closing the collage medium, and gluing down the little coin. If I turned it over, I would have seen that there are some pencil marks on the tag and had I seen that I could have glued it down that side. Deciding where I want it on the paper and putting that down. I lifted it so that the light shines through and I could see where the the script was that I wanted to use. Erasing those pencil marks and cutting out that disc as well. Now you can go ahead straight and glue down the back as well once you've done this one. I however did not decide to have paper on both sides. I just keep it at this. Circular shapes are always harder to cut out, a little bit more time consuming. So there is our circular tag. Trimming off a bit of the shark's teeth that's standing up, hanging over the edges. inking straight away that way you can hide any little bits that you missed while that's showing and it already gives you an idea of the paper that little ink bit right around is really such a nice way of finishing it off using again another one of that border strip. Cutting a piece off there that I will be using. And just roughly cut around the ends. And then we'll fuzzy cut it even more because it's easier when it's a smaller piece of paper than such a big A4 sheet. Cutting out the parts that I want.
remember these circle tags you can make in any size you want you can stack it up on top of each other you can use it as a layer tag stack tag or you can even just have smaller ones on top of say a three inch with different layers same type of image different layers different text types so many different options of how you can use these still just fuzzy cutting that checking the size the part is hanging over there like you can see so i want to use that smaller coral mushroom and then i trim the other part and i'm going to add that one again deciding where i want it and just adding glue to the back so that i can glue it down look how beautiful that darker mushroom in the middle is drawing the eye to the middle gluing that down making sure we burnish it everywhere with a fingernail adding that little coral mushroom is it called a coral mushroom probably not but that's what i'm calling it a coral mushroom it looks like coral there we have it now the background has already got some text now to do something with the background so that it really looks amazing Mm, I'm fumbling there, not knowing really what I want, what I want to do, thinking, thinking, thinking. See, overthinking sometimes is, is quite hard. And all right, let's get going with the process. Taking that little blotched stamp with the little blotches, and we're just filling in here and there. And remember, you don't have to use the whole stamp, you can use parts of the stamp. If you left the left and the right side, you can focus on the center, push down on that. You can really use the stamp however you want that stamp is genuinely one of my favorites and you can use it in every type of project where you need some background stamping still to be done the text adding some text there And by the looks of it vintage photo because it's not too dark that tiny little figure one two three and four which is really such an amazing little stem to add interest to just rounds it off all the little elements works well together closing that using rusty hinge and using that circular stamp that states specimen Add it there now if I used a stamping block it would have been easier to get a crisp image I massage that stamp into the paper yes it would be easier to use a stamping block 
showing you the text that is adding just that little bit of extra interest to the circular tag. Now let's see. Seeing that the tag is done, now it's time to decorate the pocket. You can stop here and just ink the edges. You don't have to have a pocket, I'm just reiterating that. But it is such an added bonus to have the pocket with a matching tag. Looking at it from both sides, there's a little bit of that I need to ink. There's our little tag, looking at that to see how far the image is sticking out. And let's see what we can come up with and how to decorate the pocket. Bits of labels. What are we going to use? Mm, using some of my own number labels. Again, these are not available in a shop. It's for my own use. If you've got some program that you can use, 53. Who knows what that number 53 is for? Who knows what and who is Herbie? If you know, let me know in the comments down below. You can leave me a purple heart. Let's do a purple heart as purple is my favorite color. If you have any idea what a new hobby is. I'm using the rest of that little image just so that we can pull the pocket and the tag together. A clever way of using that it's a scrap piece yeah it could easily be discarded or it could be used by now you would know that I do not throw any pieces of paper away unless it's really really so small that I can not do anything scraps is a good way of using or extending your your stash and with scraps, you can honestly make such beautiful little pieces of ephemera. Inking the edges there, just very lightly in all the nooks and crannies. Not too dark, very lightly. You can see it's hardly, you can hardly see the outline of it there. Then adding some of the design elements to see what I want, lacking the look of that label behind the mushrooms. That little label, looking for another one. Let's see what we will be using. another delivery van in the street outside and you can hear that alarm it makes when it is actually reversing in the street so it will be quite loud so I apologize in advance for that it's coming closer not a delivery van that is the refuge removal company And there we go. So I'm going to glue that down. First of all, that little label goes down first. And then I'm taking the mushrooms and I'm only gluing half of it down. Why do I do that? So that I can position it exactly where I want it. And then still glue down the other labels. Oh that noise I'm so sorry it's really particularly loud today and now we can have that down and the other label the bigger label which is also showing more texture different to what we use for the background and now I am going to glue down that mushroom so that 
it is stuck down properly. This way I can ensure, there's probably other ways of doing this, but this way I can ensure I have my labels where I want it. You can also glue it down top to bottom or from bottom to the top if you know where and can remember where your placement of the different labels are. Right, so our pocket is done with the labels. Now for the inking, pull it all together, inking the edges, finishing that off really nicely. You will notice I did not put it into the ink pad yet again as it's quite saturated and there's enough ink on there to last a while. Do another bit of inking still, so it's really, really good. Deepening the color here and there. And there we have it. I think it's looking amazing. And the tag is fitting in nicely there. So the tag and the pocket is done. So we've got a pocket with a tag and we've got one coin done. Anyway, you can glue this down directly into your journal where you know where to put it or where you decide to put it where you like it you can glue it down on the circular edge of the bottom oops that's a specimen card we will still make some but you can put a tag in at the back if you glue that down as a pocket so that gives you that added little bit of usage for it otherwise you can do it horizontally on, I mean, a vertically, sorry, on a belly band, or you can do it horizontally on a belly band. You can do it on the side of the tuck spot. You can tuck it in. You can glue it on the side of that tuck spot and have it like a flap that goes open. All just added interest and interactivity in your journal. And we can look at those options once we start with the signatures and getting our junk journal together. You can also have this as a topper for your for your junk journal, just saying. So we've got that one coin done and the other. We will probably decorate the other one however we want. Let's see, we'll do the smaller one now, which is a smaller circular tag and pocket. Again, just reiterating, you don't have to make the pocket. However, it's just so cute with the pocket, especially in the smaller sizes. A little bit more tricky to make, but so, so, so cute. Taking some coffee dyed paper that I crumpled up, and then I run my tea dye distress ink pad over it and it gives that richness of the rustic color, which is such a beautiful set. I am sorry that it's done now, so I'll have to make myself another set. I just love that paper so much. I used it often. What will I use for the little flap? Looking for something else, using one of the sheets that we already did. That was a full circle that I folded in half, gluing it down and then gluing down that semicircle. Using a spot there, putting it right to the end so we minimize our cutting. So just cutting that curved line. Don't cut into the tag or the flap of the pocket. Just trimming off the ends. Gluing down the tag as well so that that would have some time to, to dry before we start working with it. So cutting that out, you could have just 
glued it down and waited a little bit and then punched it out if you so wish or you could have just used double-sided scrapbook paper already printed cardstock all right that noise will now be done they finish with their rounds for this afternoon using the glue stick this time showing you that you don't have to just have a fine tip nozzle you can do it very very faintly with the with the glue stick not too rough just on the edge and glue that down ink the ends and also directly off the little tag again haven't dipped it into the ink pad yet using the stamps going to stamp with walnut stain distress walnut stain directly onto that massaging that stamp into that little tag and there we have it that is done look at that simple very very effective if you have a small sticker or a little embellishment that you can use there by all means use that you do you so they're adding a little bit of text to the bottom just for added interest and pulling all the pieces together so there we have our big circular tag with pocket the ATC coin where we have stamped and then our tiny little circular pocket and tag Thank you so much for joining me today. If you learned something and you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Show me what you have done. You can add it to the comments. And if you haven't done so, please subscribe. And I hope you enjoyed today. Do take care and I will see you all soon again. Bye for now.